Well, you've already spent a lot of time going over this first set of IV types of calculations where there's a machine. Let me refresh your memory. It's been a week ago. When you have a machine, infusion pump, infusion controller, syringe pump, or whatever you call this thing, George, Ralph, Sam, you have to find the number of milliliters per hour. Okay, milliliters. Per hour. That's what you must determine and program that into the pump. But if there's no machine, I hate to use the word primitive or old timey, but if there's no, there's a very low tech kind of thing here where there's just a bag. Below the bag, there's this thing called a drip chamber. And there's a picture of this in your book to look at. And the stuff, the stuff in the IV bag, the IV fluid, whether it contains medicine or not, is just dripping through, and you'll watch a drip, drip drip, drip, and by gravity flow, it just feeds the fluid into the patient who's stuck somewhere, okay? So whether you call it a manual IV set, hand calibrated IV set, gravity flow IV set, that's what those are. There's no machine involved in doing this. What you do there is, when you have no machine, you're gonna have to find the number of drops per minute. Very different. So again, back to the basics. If there's a machine, you have to find milliliters per hour and program that into the machine. If you don't have a machine, you must determine, you must calculate the number of drops per minute. And then you will get your watch, you'll watch the little drip chamber, and you count one, two, three, four, fives. And when it's dripping at the proper rate, you've done it correctly and you'll give the patient the proper amount of the liquid in the appropriate amount of time you're told to give it in. Now, there's a lot of ways you can do this. This, I think, is the best way. Oh, the way I like. So, do it my way. It's a formula, V over T times C equals R. Now, the reason I like this method, number one, it's real simple. In fact, I'm not making this up, I'm not exaggerating. I don't exaggerate and make things up ever. This was invented, truth. Okay. This was invented and has been used ever since before calculators existed. You're thinking, wait a minute, was there a time? Yes, there was a time before calculators even existed. I lived back then. I remember going to high school. We'd ride, you know, I'd ride my dinosaur up to the cave and we'd chisel our schoolwork into stone tablets. We didn't have calculators. So this was being, this has been done for decades by nurses with a piece of paper and a pencil in their brain. Simple math. It involves fairly simple math. That's why I like it. It's simple math. So here's how it works. We have three numbers. One here, one here, and one here. Whatever they mean, I'll get there, there to say it. You plug this number in, this number, this number in, and you get the answer. So let's discuss what these symbols mean, what these letters mean. V stands for volume, but we must understand very carefully. Volume, in this case, means the number of milliliters per hour you're giving that patient. Now, something should have gone off in your brain and went, blah, 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 blah. hey, wait a minute. That's what we, yes, it is. That's what you have to determine if there's a machine. But if there's no machine involved, you still have to calculate or somehow know the number of milliliters per hour you're giving the patient, and that's the number you plug in right here. So V should be a fairly simple number to find because number one, you already know how to do it. That's the previous quiz. Sometimes even it's even easier. Sometimes you're just told that. Like you're told, okay, give this patient 125 milliliters per hour, or sometimes you have to calculate it yourself, but it's fairly simple. Whether you're told it or whether you do the calculation, you know how to do the calculations, you put that number here. The number of milliliters per hour. Now a caution, it's not the total number of milliliters you're giving the patient. It's the number of milliliters you're giving for each hour that goes by. Milliliters per hour. Okay. Now T, T stands for time. What you plug in here is time as the number of minutes per hour. Now hopefully something else went off in your brain, went bloop, 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 
All right, when whatever, I don't know how your brain works. Mine goes some of the time. What should have gone off in your brain was this. The number of minutes per hour is always the same. It never varies. Even in leap year, even when we change our clocks for daylight saving time, the number of minutes per hour never changes. Now, in case you're an ag, you probably don't know this, but let me fill you in. How many minutes are there per hour? 60. So you talk about the ultimate total no-brainer. What is this number for T always going to be? No exceptions ever, ever, ever. The number 60. So as I do these problems and show you on the next few videos, okay, we'll put middle per hour here, put the, what number's gonna go here without even thinking about it? 60. Pretty simple. Well, now this thing, calibration. What the word means, like the calibration, or a lot of books call the drop factor, same thing, okay, but see, I like the C here, not the D for drop factor. So, means, here's the thing, the thing that little drip chamber. Hey, how big is it dropping? Oh, about to, what? drops differ. The companies who make these IV sets, and again, the picture that accompanies this video lecture, it shows the drip chambers. And the tubing from which the drop drips, or the drip drops, it's a certain size. If there's a small tubing, a small drop drips out. If it's a larger diameter tubing, a larger drop drips from the tubing. So drops differ in size. So the companies who make these IV sets, they stamp there on the label of the IV set. Hey, these come, by the way, in a you know, package, like a plastic package. You rip it open and take all the gizmos out, gizmos and watchamacalls and thingamabobs and thingamajigs. Uh, thingamabobs are real similar to thingamajigs, actually. Okay, they're very similar. You gotta learn them apart. But all the stuff that comes with the IV set, the tubing and the little clamps and the whatever, it'll stamp on the package label, it'll have a calibration, a drop factor. There's a number. It tells you the number of drops per milliliter, meaning it tells you how many drops it takes to fill up one milliliter. And that will differ from drop to drop. Again, they calibrate, they actually on purpose make the tubing a certain size, they calibrate it to give you a very specific number of drops per milliliter. And you'll see just about well, maybe four main numbers. You may see the number 10, that's one that's used. Uh, some have, well, some have 12, that's not terribly common, but you may see 12. But another common one is 15. Some have 20. Some have 60. Those are the most common of these drop factors. Meaning, what does that 10 mean? It means that little drip, those drops dripping out, those drips dropping out, drops <clears throat> You got me. There are 10 drops doo -doo, that would fill one milliliter. Hey, this takes 15 drops to fill up one milliliter, etc. This takes 20, this takes 60. By the way, ooh, this is some high power thinking here, higher level cognitive function going on here. Compare the 10 to the 60. Which of those are bigger drops? Hmm. If it takes 60 drops to fill one milliliter versus it takes 10 drops to fill one milliliter, which are bigger drops? This one, those are big. Doesn't take many drops to fill up one milliliter. These are little teeny, meeny, tiny drops. It takes lots of those, 60 of those to fill up one little milliliter. And so what you also see the 60 drop per milliliter IV set, that's also called a micro drop IV set. A micro drop, the word micro, micro, I can spell this, M-I-C-R-O-D-R-O-B. Micro drop, by the way, this doesn't matter. That's actually a brand name. Some company came up with a name, kind of like Kleenex or you know, Chevrolet. That's a brand name, micro drop. But when you see the word micro drop, your brain always goes, boom, that's the 60 drop per milliliter IV set. These are called macro drop, which is kind of silly because there's three different macro drops. So if you see micro drop, it means one thing, the 60 drop per milliliter IV set. You'll never see just the word macro drop by itself because that can mean any one of these. 
that micro drop, just the word by itself, always means 60. So here we have it. We have a number here, V, in milliliters per hour that you're either told or you calculate, and you know how to do that already. That number goes here. You have time, the number of minutes per hour, and it's always, remember this? The number 60. There we go, got that. This, hey, that's given to you. In the real world, it's stamped, it's on the label. It's included on the label of your IV set. In the homework and on the quiz, you'll be told what it is. You'll be told the drop factor is blah, 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 or uh, you have a 15 drop per milliliter IV set, or you've got a micro drop IV set. You'll be told this number. So here's a number that's easy. Here's a no brand that's always a number 60. Here's a number you're told. You take this, divide by this times this, and you have the rate, which will be in drops per minute. That's what you're looking for. Now on the next video, we're going to, we, I will, I don't know what you will or not. I'll go into doing some examples of these to show you how it all works out. Now I'm gonna to try to make this hard, but that won't be easy, because these are fairly simple problems. So I'm gonna take a break here and go take a you know, body break, I don't know what I'm gonna do, huh? and come back in a while and show some real problems, oh boy.